Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, Ancient of Days. Thank you, our Father in heaven. We say, hallowed be your holy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we give you praise for another opportunity of life. We give you praise for another privilege to be in the land of the living. We give you praise because you are Father. We give you praise because you are God. You are the holy and mighty God. There is none like unto you. There is none to be compared with you. You are wonderful. You are holy. You are righteous. You are great and mighty. There is none like unto you. Father, we praise you. We thank you. We give you all the glory. We exalt your holy Holy name. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Abba Father. We give you all the glory. You are our God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have come this morning to worship you. We have come to adore you. We have come to give you praise because you deserve it. You deserve it. You are our Father. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. Father, we thank you, oh God, because you are the one who hears our, our voice, oh God. We have come because there is none like unto you. Thank you, our Father in heaven. Thank you, our God. Thank you, our Savior. Thank you, our Redeemer. Thank you, our Advocate. We praise you, Lord. We promise that as long as we live, we shall praise you. As long as we live, we shall praise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Almighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Brethren, let's just begin to worship God this morning. Let's offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Savior and the Bishop of our soul. Wherever you are, begin to offer him voice of thanksgiving to the Bishop of your soul, to your Savior, to your Redeemer. He's the one who saves you. His name is called Yahweh, our Savior. He's called Yahweh. Yahweh is his name. He's our Savior. He's your Savior. Begin to Thank your Savior for saving you, for making you to be in the land of the living. Say, Father, I thank you. I offer you all my praise. I adore you, my Father. You are the bishop of my soul. I thank you. I promise that as long as I live, I shall praise you. As long as I live, I shall praise you. Thank you for being my Father. Thank you for being my Lord. Thank you for being my Savior. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's begin to call upon his presence. Say, Holy Spirit, I need you, I need you, I need you. I need more of you. I want to know you. I want to, I want your presence in my life. Holy Spirit, I need you. Come into me. Have your way. Take absolute control. I depend upon you. You are my best friend. You are my senior partner. You are everything to me. Holy Spirit, I desire your presence. Let your power saturate my life. Let your power saturate this atmosphere. In the name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and begin to ask for God's presence. Father, I need your presence. I need you, O Lord. I need you, O Lord. I need you, O Lord. I want to dwell in your presence forever. I want to dwell in your presence forever. Forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I need your presence right now. I need your presence. I need your presence. We need your presence in Revival Life Church Dallas. We need your presence in our home. We need your presence in every area of our life. All the space have your way. Take absolute control. You are the one in charge. We give you all the glory, Father, because the God Almighty is taking charge of our atmosphere. In the name of Jesus Christ, saturate this atmosphere with your presence, saturate it with your glory, saturate it with your power in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, we bless your name in Jesus Christ's name. We're afraid. Let's begin to intercede for Revival Life Church Dallas. That Every of our member and those who join online, that God will meet them at their point of need. God will meet them at their point of need and answer their prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you for this sanctuary, Revival Life Church Dallas. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let us behold your power in this place. Let us behold your glory in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, let everyone hearing my voice behold your power. Let them behold your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Father, my God, we pray, O oh God, for every Everyone intercedes for everyone hearing my voice, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that the Lord Almighty will meet you at your point of need. Say, Father, meet me at 
right? My points of needs in the name of Jesus, right? My spiritual needs, my physical needs, my emotional needs, my psychological needs in the name of Jesus, right? Even my financial needs, Lord, meet me at my point of need. I call upon you because you are my father, you are Abba Father, you are Jehovah Jireh, you are Jehovah Rohi, you are the one who supply my needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus, Father Almighty, God of heaven, supply my needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus, supply the needs of Revival Light Church Dallas, supply the needs of Midnight Commander Prayer Network, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, supply the needs of everyone hearing my voice right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, as many that is hearing my voice right now, as many that are hearing my voice right now, supply their needs in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Meet them at their points of needs in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Show yourself as Jehovah. Show yourself as Jehovah Almighty. Great and mighty God. The one who does no those mighty and great things. Father, oh God, there is nothing too hard for you to do. There is nothing impossible for you to do. You promise that when we call upon you, you will answer us. Father, this morning, we call upon you. We call upon your presence. Father, oh God, we ask of you that you will be with us. You will guide us. You will protect us. You will shield us in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare your blessing over our life this week. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, let your blessing rest upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus, right? Let your glory cover us this week. In the name of Jesus, right? Father, we ask of your blessing, the Abrahamic blessing, the Abrahamic blessing. Let it rest upon us this week. In the name of Jesus, right? We shall be blessed. Our going out shall be blessed. Our coming in shall be blessed. Our season shall be blessed. Our standing shall be blessed. Our sleeping shall be blessed. In the name of Jesus, Christ, you will give us rest on all round. In the mighty name of Jesus, right? Father, we thank you, Lord. We'll bless your name. We ask of you that even this week, oh Lord, Father, proclaim the works of oh, your work in our life. In the name of Jesus, right? We proclaim your work. Do your mighty work in our life. Use us mightily as a vessel unto honor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God, because we are the light of the world. We are the children of God. Lord, use us mightily. We will make ourselves available to you, almighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we make ourselves available to you, almighty mighty God. Father, we will ask of you to use us for your glory. Use us for your glory. Use us for your kingdom work. Make us so winners. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, give us the grace to win souls for you. Father, give us the grace to win souls for you. That will be proud of you. It will post about you. We will talk about you. People will see the light of God in us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you, Lord, cause us to rejoice this week. We decree that things of rejoicing shall happen to us. Father, we shall rejoice this week. Because your words say the righteous will rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. And all the upright in heart will glorify in him. Father, this is your word. Father, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we shall rejoice. Things of rejoicing shall happen to us this week. In the name of Jesus, right? I decree and declare that only things of rejoicing shall happen in my life this week, this morning this year in the name of Jesus Christ even as we have decreed that this month we shall take dominion we are dominion taker. Father, in every aspect of our life, we have dominion. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have dominion. In the mighty name of Jesus, we decree dominion. In every area of our life, whatever that is standing against us, O oh God, shall bow for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have dominion. Father, you will give us victory on every side. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have victory. We have victory on every side. Whatsoever we lay our hands upon this week, we shall have victory. We shall shout for joy. We shall shout for joy. Only things that will make us joyful will happen in our life. You will give us joy unspeakable. I decree joy unspeakable over our life, over our home. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare joy unspeakable in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Only things of joy shall happen. We shall shout for joy to the Lord Almighty in the name of Jesus Christ. We shall glory in his name. Father, over concerning this commission, we will glory in his name. Over this commission, we shall shout for joy. Over Revival Life Church Dallas, we shall shout for joy. Over Midnight Commander Prayer Network, we shall shout for joy. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you for all our ministry platform. We thank you, O oh God, for the TV ministry. 
the supernatural intervention with Pastor Praise on TV. We thank you for the radio ministry. Father, we thank you. We thank you for our NGO. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the prayer line, the Midnight Commander Prayer Network. We thank you. We thank you for the church ministry, the Revival Life Church Dallas, every of those ministry. Father in heaven, Abba Father, we commit it into your hands, O oh Lord. Father, use this for your glory. Use this for your honor. As many people who align with us ministry, let your blessing rest upon them. Answer their prayers, O oh God. Father, O oh God, let them have intimacy with you. You. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let there be salvation of souls. Even those who listen on radio, those who watch on TV, other of God, let them receive you as their personal Lord and Savior. And those who have received you, transform their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, as many people that are asking for one thing or the other, you are the God that answer right prayer. Answer the prayers of your children. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, fill our life with good things, O oh Lord. Fill our life with good things. Deliver us from evil. In the mighty in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, our Father, deliver everyone hearing my voice from evil. No evil shall happen in our home, in our job, in our business places, in our family, in our health. In the name of Jesus Christ, the hand of God shall rest mightily upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you, Lord, we bless your name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord, for this week you shall be gracious to us. You shall be gracious to us and you shall bless us. Father, this week, this day, this month, be gracious to us. Be merciful to us. Bless us, O oh Lord. Make your face to shine upon us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, wherever we go this week, whatever we do, the Lord will be gracious to us. The Lord will be merciful to us. The Lord will cause his face to shine upon us. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, O oh God, I decree and declare that the Lord will be gracious to me. The Lord will be merciful to me. The Lord will favor me. The Lord will bless me. He will cause his face to shine upon me. I decree it and I declare it and so shall it be. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, Father, I thank you, Lord, I bless your name. In Jesus Christ's name, we are prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Revival Life Church. Thank you for showing up in person. And we want to thank all those who are watching us online. Um, we're going to make available the link to this uh, broadcast. Um, take that link and uh, send it to everybody that you can and encourage them to join this service. I believe that God has a word his wisdom is going to come to you. Amen. You need the wisdom of God. Um, when you apply the wisdom of God in your life, you get results that are beyond your efforts. So God's wisdom is going to come to you through his word today. And as his word comes forth, his power is also going to come to you. Praise God. Uh, so take advantage of what the Lord will be doing today. And I believe and I declare that you would have a new story to tell in the marvelous name of the Lord Jesus. So uh, invite everybody to join us. All right. Glory to God. Okay, let's worship and then we're going to go into the word. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are he. I worship you, I worship you, you are here working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, you are 
way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, let's worship him, everybody. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are he, mending broken hearts. I work you. I worship you. You are here turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Let's begin to call him by his names. You are the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, light in the darkness. You are the ancient of days, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. You are God like no other. You are faithful in all your ways, holy in all your works. You are beautiful for every situation. You're the majesty on high. The ever living redeemer, the God who is more than enough. The one who is, who was, and who is to come. You are greater than the greatest, higher than the highest. You are exalted above the heavens and above the earth. We worship your majesty. We worship you, your majesty. The one who sits above the circle of the earth and inhabitants as grasshoppers before him. The one who divided the Red Sea by the blast of his nostrils. The one who has the first word and the final word over our lives. You are faithful, you are worthy, you are mighty, and we exalt you. We exalt you today. We exalt you today. We exalt you today. Amen. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross by death to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky lord i lift your name on high lord i lift your name on high lord i love to sing your praises I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross by death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the skies. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross by death to pay from the cross 
to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lift your name on high, Lord, I lift your name on high. I'll put you in front, in front of my melody. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I'll make room for two. You and I, Jesus, you are all that matters. You are all that matters. Oh, way, oh, way. You are all that matters. Oh, way, oh, way. You are all that matters. Oh, way, oh, way. You are all that matters, oh way, oh way. You are all that matters. Come on, let's just glorify him. God, we thank you because you are real. We thank you because you are present with us. We thank you that we have this honor, this privilege, God, to be in your house today. And we just pray, God, that you will visit with us. And that our lives will uh, be uh, changed and, and, and blessed because we, we, we met with you, God. So go ahead, God, and, and just bless this service in a way that only you can. We give you praise. We give you honor. We just glorify your excellent and your powerful name in the name of Jesus. I, I sense the Lord telling me that someone who is watching, you are going through pain. And it's got to do with your veins. It's got something to do with your veins. I pray for you right now. And I, and I, and I ask that God's healing power will surge through your body. Amen. I decree that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are healed from that pain. Amen. That pain ceases right now. Amen. Be set free. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. be delivered. Thank you, God, for giving that person peace Amen. and health and strength. Amen. I just give you the glory. Hallelujah. I just give you the praise, God, for touching that person. All right. Let's stand and we're going to recite our two passages. Matthew 6, 33, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 16. Let's start with 2 Corinthians 4, 16. For which cause we faint not? But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Let's go to Matthew 6.33 from the Passion Translation. So above all, constantly chase after God's kingdom and his righteousness. Then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. Lift your right hand and say with me, I'm a God chaser. I'm a God chaser. I'm a change maker. I'm a change maker. I'm a disciple builder. I'm a disciple builder. I live in revival. I live in revival. I practice the revival lifestyle. I practice the revival lifestyle. I influence my world. I influence my world with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. So help me God. Amen. I'm a God chaser. Living in revival, touching the world with the love and the power of God. I'm a God chaser. Living in revival, touching the world with the love and the power of God. I love this family of God. So closely knit into all. They have taken me into their arms, and I'm so glad to be a part of this great family. I love this family. I love this family of God. So closely knit into all, 
They have taken me into their arms, and I'm so glad to be a part of this great family. Come on, let's make some noise. Let's make some noise. Amen. Glory to God. While you're still standing, I want you to go to the book of James chapter 5. We're going to be looking at verses 16 and 17. James chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. James chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. Okay, we're going to focus on the B part of verse 16. The B part. So we're going to start to read from where it says the effectual. Okay, so let's go. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let's go to verse 17. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Let's have verse 18. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. For a topic, we're going to talk about the prayer of a dominion taker. The prayer of a dominion taker. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come humbly before you today. First, we acknowledge that you are our Father and our God, and you have been faithful, you've been good, you've been kind, you've been gracious. You never fail. You are so faithful that we can take your word to the bank. We can trust you, God. You are reliable. And now, God, we are in your presence. And God, we ask that you will open your words to us. God, that you will give us understanding and insight in your word. God, we pray that your word will come in such a way that we will comprehend it and that we will be able to apply it to our lives. Our desire is to live biblically functional lives. Our desire is to live effective lives as believers in you. So God, go ahead and open up our understanding. Today we declare that the atmosphere comes into a, a subjection to your presence, oh God. Anything that's going to detract from your purpose, we bring it into subjection today. We ask that your spirit will have his way. Go ahead, Holy Spirit. Speak to us. Release the kind of anointing that makes the preaching of the word easy and that and that and that enables the preacher to go beyond his 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 his. his his, uh, his, his intelligence beyond his preparation and to be able to see into your heart and download what is in your heart or oh God and, and, and communicate it accurately and effectively to your people. So God, do what only you can. And here's our promise that we will give you glory for all that you do. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless you. All right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The prayer of a dominion taker. The prayer of a dominion taker. In James chapter 5, verses 16 and 17, uh, even to 18, which is the passage that we read, um, it tells us about Elijah and one of his exploits in prayer. It tells us that in verse number 16, it tells us something about the prayer of a man who is in proper alignment with God. That's the meaning of the word righteous. A man who is in right standing with God. It says that his prayer availeth much. Can you give us the, uh, the amplified? The amplified. Let's see what, what it says there. Um... It says, therefore, confess your sins one to another, your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. Now, here's where I'm going. It says, the heartfelt and persistent prayer. Notice there, persistent, heartfelt, 
Okay? Fervent prayer is heartfelt prayer. And then it is also persistent. Of a righteous man, a believer, can accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. Oh my goodness. What a, what a word right there. What a word right there. Amen. That prayer can have incredible impact. Incredible impact. And so we see Elijah coming to King Ahab. Ahab was the king at that time. And he shows up before Ahab. This is in 1 Kings and chapter 17. He shows up before Ahab. And he says to Ahab, As surely as the Lord liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be rain nor dew until I say so. One man exercising such incredible power, shutting up the heavens. Hallelujah. In other words, he was like saying to Ahab, you are the, the ruler of Israel. Okay? Ha <laughs> ha. But through my prayers, I actually control the land. How would you feel if you were a king? If you were in King's Ahab, Ahab shoes and somebody showed up and showed you that he actually has more power than, than you do. <laughs> you are the king. All right? Yet here is somebody who has more power than you do. Because he can shut up the heavens. And you can't as a king. You can't, you can't do that. He's got more power than you. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. Elijah is an example of a dominion taker. And that's what I want to bring out from, from that story. He's an example of a dominion taker. And you know, this month we are focusing on establishing our dominion. That's, that's the direction God is leading us to. But, but I need to define what a dominion taker is. Because I want you to really understand it. I want you to grasp it. What exactly is a dominion taker? Well, the word dominion, first of all, it means to rule. It means to, to, to exact influence. Okay? Hmm. So who is a dominion taker? Dominion takers are believers who seize, take hold of, and maximize what has been assigned or allocated to them. They take what has been allocated to them. And they use it to make a difference. They're dominion takers. Lift your hand with me and say, I'm a dominion taker. A dominion taker. So a dominion taker is first a believer. But he's a believer who knows what he has been given or what he has been, what has been assigned or allocated to him. He takes hold of it. He seizes it. Amen. Amen. And he uses it or maximizes it to make a difference. Now you might want to ask, so what is it that has been allocated to me? If a dominion taker is one who seizes what has been allocated to him, what has been allocated to me? Quickly, I'm going to tell you. There are about 10 things God has allocated to you. Are you still here this morning? Yes. There are about 10 things God has assigned to you. Number one, God assigned to you a purpose. You were born with a purpose. God said to Je Jeremiah, before I formed you, he said, I knew you. And before you came forth, I gave you a purpose. Your purpose is the reason for which you were created. The assignment that you were brought into the world to accomplish. That's your purpose. That's your purpose. Your purpose preceded your birth. Are you listening to me? Yes. Your purpose preceded your birth. And your relevance in life 
is going to largely depend on your purpose. You got to know your purpose and you got to live out your purpose. Are you listening to me? You see, life has to make a way for the man who is living on purpose. The man who knows his purpose. The man who is living out his purpose. Life makes room for that person. Life will make a way for that person. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. This is important. You were given an assignment by God. You were born with a purpose and for a purpose. Amen. Not only that, God also allocated or assigned to your potential. Your potential is what you are capable of. God gave you gifts. God gave you talents. God gave you abilities. You are to use them and establish your dominion. Your dominion is your mastery, your superiority. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You are to use what you have been given and establish your dominion or establish your advantage in life. Are you using what you've been given? Remember when the um, widow who the creditors were coming to take her two sons. She cried out to the prophet of God. Notice what he asked her. He said, what do you have of value? Notice when Moses leading the people of Israel was before the Red Sea. The Egyptians were behind them, led by Pharaoh. And Moses cried out unto the Lord. The Lord said to him, what is in your hand? God will always want you to use what has been assigned or allocated to you to make a difference in whatever situation you face. None of us came into the world empty. You came loaded. You have talents. You have gifts. You have abilities. That's your potential. You are loaded with potential. Number three, when you give your life to Christ, you were given a new identity by Almighty God. You used to be a sinner. You used to be an enemy of God. You were alienated from the blessings of God. But now, you are a child of God. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. You are more than a conqueror. You are a, uh, a uh, you are the righteousness of God. The apple of his eye. That means you are dear to him and you are precious to him. You are deeply loved by God and, and, and greatly valued by him. You are the object of his love. You are the one he focuses on 24-7. Are you listening to me? You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. You are a peculiar person. You are God's own purchased possession. You are his property. You belong to him. You are precious to him. Like gold. Are you there? That's your identity. Your identity is who God says you are. Who God says you are. You've been given an identity. Hallelujah. Function from that identity. Or function with that identity. Live up to who God says you are. When you walk in your identity, you are establishing your dominion. Are you, listen, are you listening to this? You see, a lion doesn't have to prove what it is. It's a lion. All it's got to do is, 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 is express itself. Are you there? Are you there? Yes, God gave you an identity as a child of God. Establish your identity. And the devil has no place in your life. 
Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Number four, you were given blessings or benefits of redemption. So many blessings that God has allocated to you. Utilize those blessings. The blessing of relationship with him. The blessing of peace of mind. The blessing of, 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 of hearing God's voice and receiving direction or counsel from the Spirit of God. The blessing of access to the wisdom of God. The blessing of divine healing. The blessing of having God answer your prayers. The blessing of receiving help when you are in trouble. Are you listening to me? You've received so many blessings. Take advantage of them. Apart from that, you've also been assigned or allocated provision. You see, provision simply means resources for the vision that God gave you or resources for your purpose. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. God allocated resources to you. In other words, there are certain uh, uh, resources that I just meant to accompany you or follow you. All you need to do is to know what your purpose is, amen, and walk in your purpose and place a demand, all right? Place a demand on the resources that God has assigned to you by walking in your purpose, and those resources will show up for you. Are you there? You have been assigned authority. You are to use that authority. Authority is the power, is the, is the right to use the power of God to get things done. You've been given authority. Authority is commanding power. Jesus said, behold, I give unto you power to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. You've been given power over the enemy. Glory to God. Amen. That's your authority. Somebody say authority. You've been given a position. God has raised you up and made you sit together with Christ in heavenly places. You have a position. Are you still here? Yes, sir. You have a position. And, and it's important for you to understand. He says he has raised you up and made you sit together with Christ in heavenly places. Now your position is far above principalities and powers. So by rank, you are superior to, to, to the enemy. Come on, are you still here? Yes, You've been given a position by Almighty God. Hallelujah. You've also been given responsibilities. Amen. Amen. There are things God expects you to do. God expects you to love him. God expects you to serve him. God expects you to put him first in your life. God expects you to love your neighbors. You have responsibilities. God expects you to obey his word. These are responsibilities that you've been, that have been allocated or assigned to you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. When you utilize, what, when, you, when you perform your responsibilities, you fulfill your responsibilities, you enjoy favor on every side. Somebody shout hallelujah. I can't hear you shout hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What's going on on the screen? Praise God. Here's something else I want you to know that you've been given. You've been assigned territory by Almighty God. Somebody say territory. <laughs> you've been assigned territory. You're a dominion taker. You've been assigned territory by God. You have your own space in life. Remember, Isaac said, God hath made room for us and we shall be successful in the land. God hath made room for us. You have been given your own space. But apart from your own space, as you walk with God, he gives you territory over which you are to establish dominion. I need you to understand that. Because when you look at uh, 
James chapter 5, where we read 16 and 17, you got to understand that Elijah's prayer was not in the context of having his personal needs met. His prayer was in the context of establishing dominion over a territory. Come on, I need you to follow me. I need you to follow me. His prayer here was in the context of establishing dominion over a territory. As a dominion taker, you have been given territory by God. You are to establish his, you are to establish dominion over that territory. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Amen. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna touch upon that as, as we go ahead. You have been given territory. Praise God. And then Psalm 5 and verse number 12 says that God has crowned you. Amen. With favor. So on top of all these things that God has allocated with to you, he crowned you with his grace. Oh, hallelujah. Grace is his, 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 his supernatural ability working in your life to enable you know and use to, to, the, to the best, in the best way or to, the, to maximum effect everything that has been allocated to you. That's grace. He has crowned you with grace. Say with me, I am crowned with grace. I'm crowned with favor. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I need you to understand that prayer is a technology. Say with me, technology. technology. Prayer is a technology or a system by which the dominion taker functions. Prayer is a technology or a system by which the dominion taker functions. I need you to really, really grasp this. Prayer is a technology or a system by which the dominion taker functions. Amen. Now, to many of us, prayer is a helpline. You see, a helpline means when I get in trouble, I call on the Lord. I talk to God when I'm in trouble. Uh, my, my, my concept of prayer is that prayer is a lifeline. I, I pray because I have needs. I pray because I want problems solved. I pray because I'm facing obstacles and I want God to move on my behalf. That, that's my idea of prayer. Well, that, that is a, uh, that is, well, prayer is a lifeline. Are you listening to me? But your concept of prayer should go higher than that. You might begin to think of prayer as a lifeline when you are a, a, a young believer. But you got to go beyond that. Praise God. Yeah. You see, dominion takers see prayer as not just a helpline. What did I mention first? Did I say helpline or a lifeline? Helpline. Helpline. Okay. Helpline. Dominion takers see prayer beyond uh, a helpline. They see prayer as a lifeline. What does it mean that prayer is a lifeline? It means that I just don't, I, 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 just, I don't only call on God when I'm in trouble, but that I realize that the spiritual life is sustained through relationship, fellowship, and intimacy with God. I understand that the spiritual life is about dependence on God. Submit yourselves therefore to God. That's the spiritual life. It's about dependence on God. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The spiritual life is all about dependence on God. Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. I gotta rely on the Father 100%.
24 7 i got to rely on the father in john chapter 15 he said i am the vine ye are the branches he said without me you can do nothing so the dominion taker realizes that prayer is a lifeline the only way i can sustain my spiritual life is by staying connected with god so i have no choice but to pray because prayer helps me stay in contact with god so that my spiritual life can be sustained prayer is not just about me asking god to meet my needs prayer is about me developing a relationship with god that's why it is a lifeline yes. Amen. so you and i have got beyond seeing prayer as a helpline we gotta come up to where we begin to see prayer as a lifeline hmm. but even beyond that dominion takers actually see prayer as a work line because prayer isn't only seeking god to meet our needs prayer isn't only fellowship with god prayer is also cooperating with god to effect his will and his purposes on earth dominion takers are those who understand that through prayer they cooperate with god to carry out his plans on earth hallelujah Amen. prayer is making myself available to god so he can use me to establish his kingdom here on earth that's it you gotta have that concept of prayer you've got to have this you've got to have this you see this these three things i said about prayer you've got you've got to understand them your concept of prayer has got to go beyond um, it, it being a, a helpline you got to see prayer more as a lifeline and then as a walk line hallelujah Amen. thank you lord jesus so how does how does the dominion taker how does he utilize prayer how does a dominion taker utilize prayer i'm going to show you five ways that the dominion taker does that the dominion taker understands that prayer is a process it's a process it's a process it's a process of coming into agreement with god coming into alignment with god cooperating with god to accomplish his will on earth so what's this process what does it what does it entail let's let's look closely at it number one number one this process involves first of all understanding understanding it involves first of all understanding see if i don't understand what prayer is all about i'm not going to be able to effectively pray as a dominion taker i got to understand what prayer is. And we've talked about prayer being beyond a helpline. It's a lifeline. It's also a work line for the dominion taker. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I need to understand that God has allocated territory to me. He's allocated territory to me. And he expects me to enforce or establish his dominion in that territory. That's important. You see, when you look at, when you look at, um, um, let's go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 10. Or Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 10. I want to show you something there. Matthew 6 and verse number 10. Look at this. It says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven okay let's start from verse number nine let's start from verse number nine i want to show you something here from verse number nine okay the disciples said to jesus lord jesus teach us to pray teach us to pray just like john taught his disciples and here's what jesus said to them he said after this manner therefore pray ye he is not saying repeat the same words he is saying i'm giving you a structure okay i'm giving you a structure that can become a guide for you. Amen. So let's analyze this structure. Notice he says here, our father which art in heaven. 
When you look closely at this prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, you are going to understand God's priority when it comes to prayer. Notice he started by saying, Our Father, which art in heaven. In other words, the very first purpose of prayer is for relationship. Remember we said prayer is what? We should see prayer as a lifeline. Relationship. Our Father, which art in heaven. Prayer is about relationship. There's no way I can develop as a child of God. There's no way I can grow to maturity. Except I learn how to spend time with him. There's no way I'm going to be able to know him and be known of him. Except I develop closeness with him. Now, there are people who say, oh, but God, God understands my heart from far away. He knows everything about me. Well, that's because you're talking about the sovereignty of God. You're not talking about relationship with him. There's a difference between God knowing you generally because of his sovereignty and God knowing you out of intimacy with him. God wants you to be so close to him that he understands the motives of your heart. God wants to deal with you based on, the, on, on how he understands you. You see, David was a man who had a deep walk with God. And the reason was because David drew so close to God that God understood him. So God looked beyond his actions and saw into the motives of his heart. Come on now. And that's why he called David a man after his own heart. Are you still here? That can only come through relationship. 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 Notice this. The Bible says the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know his own heart? So when you draw close to God, he will know your heart and help you know your heart. Amen. He's the only one who can know your heart. Are you there? Yes. So prayer is about relationship. Remember again. What? Lifeline. Lifeline. Then he says, hallowed be thy name. That tells us another purpose for prayer. It's about worship. It's about worship. Worship is when we, when we, when we ascribe value to God. See, worship means that I take everything that I am and I bring it into submission to God and use it as a tool to bring him praise. Amen. That's worship. See, worship isn't just, I sing a song. Father, you are worthy. That's not just worship. Worship is the submission of everything that I am. Amen. Every, see, when I worship, everything that I am becomes laid down before the Lord. Mm. My self-importance, my success, my pride. I take it all and I lay it before the Lord. And I say, God, without, apart from you, I couldn't be all that I am. So here I am giving you everything that I am just to tell you that I, I honor you. That's worship. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Glory to God. Now let's go to verse number 10. In verse number 10, he says, thy kingdom come. So notice from the prayer of G this prayer pattern that Jesus gave us. The third thing we are to pray about is the kingdom. What is the kingdom? The rule and the reign of God. The influence of God in the earth. That's his kingdom. Are you listening to me? Yes, Remember as dominion takers, we have been given what? One of the things we've been given, territory. So thy kingdom come means that I am to bring God's culture, the culture of heaven. Culture means the way, a people's culture means the way they do things. The, the, way, the, the, the way they do things. Okay, the way they live, the way they do things. So I am to bring the culture of heaven into wherever I am. I'm to bring the culture of heaven into my life. That means I begin to think, I begin to talk, I begin to act like it is in heaven. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Remember, Paul said, whatever, whatever things are pure, whatever things are perfect, whatever things are lovely, if there be any praise, if there be any virtue, think on these things. In other words, think the way your father thinks. So thy kingdom come means 
that I superimpose the culture of heaven in my life and anywhere where I live. In my home, I superimpose the culture of heaven. If I am in, a, in the workplace, I may not own that business, but my presence there means the kingdom has come there. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. In other words, the devil shouldn't be messing with any business. As long as I'm an employee there, even if I'm not the owner of the business, I'm an employee. Wherever I am, the kingdom shows up. Amen. See, I'm carrying something. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. I'm carrying something. I'm carrying something. You don't look at me like I'm nobody. I'm carrying something. I'm carrying the kingdom. The rule and the reign of God. The presence of God with me. Wherever I go, wherever I show up, the kingdom shows up. The rule and the reign of God. The influence of God shows up in that area. Are you listening to me? So God expects me to go beyond. Watch this. Okay, we'll go. You will notice that give us this day our daily bread is in verse 11. That comes number five. It means that asking for my own needs shouldn't be my priority in prayer. It means that prayer is not merely a helpline. I just pray because I have it. I need something. I wake up in the morning and all my prayers, Father God, I thank you that I'm alive. I thank you that I'm not in the hospital. How many of you pray that prayer? You are like, I, I thank you that I'm not in the hospital. Don't pray that prayer. I thank you that I'm not in the hospital. You know what you're indirectly saying? Well, those in the hospital are unfortunate. That's what you are saying. Those in the hospital are unfortunate. Uh, maybe they're there because they can pray as well as I can pray. Are you, are you listening to me? <laughs> so don't pray. God, I thank you that I'm not in the hospital. No. Or maybe, God, I thank you that I'm not in the mortuary. When a child of God dies, it's a beautiful thing. Are you still here? Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So you don't, you don't despise a believer who is dead as if you're better than him because he's dead. Paul came to a point in his life where he said, for me, to, to be alive is for your benefit. To go and be with the Father is for my greater benefit. I prefer to go, but I am still here for your benefit. He said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Sometimes we gotta we gotta shift our understanding. There's so many things we do, you know, and, and we just think so many things we say and we do, and we just think, oh, everybody else does it. Hmm. There, there are a few things in Christianity that has got to shift. All right. So don't be one of those. I, Father, I thank you that I'm not in the mortuary. Father, I thank you that I'm not in the hospital. No, rather pray and say, Father, I thank you that I'm alive. I thank you that I am here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> because if you were in the hospital, all right, so let's say now we're live streaming. Some of our members are not here. They've not been coming to church because of the pandemic. Okay, so we're live streaming. And maybe there's, there's somebody who is in the hospital right now. We have members. We have, we have people who are in group homes. Okay, so one of them is in a group home and he's watching and we are praying here. And we are saying, Father, we thank you that we are not in the hospital. And that person is like, oh, so um, I belong to that church and, and they are praying and, and, and they are saying they thank God that they are not in the hospital. So they are saying I'm unfortunate because I'm in the hospital. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Glory to God. So notice that it is in verse 11 that he says, give us this day our daily bread. But before he gets to that, he first of all talks about our Father which art in heaven, relationship. Thy kingdom come, worship. Thy will, thy kingdom, no, uh, our Father which art in heaven, relationship. What else does he say? Hallowed be thy name, worship. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come. This is where we're focusing on. Thy kingdom come. Remember, I said, Dominion Taker, you've been given territory. You are to pray and ask that God 
will bring his culture, the culture of heaven, down into wherever you are and influence that territory. As a dominion taker, you are to take territories for God, hold territories for God, and expand territories for God. As a dominion taker, you are to be the gatekeeper of your home and say to the enemy, you see, this place, <laughs> this is my territory. This is out of bounds to you. You can't touch my children. You can't touch my health. You can't touch my business. You can't touch my finances. You can't touch my husband because this is my territory. Hallelujah. This is my territory. You don't mess with my territory. That's a dominion taker. Are you listening to me? Yes. See, dominion takers are not wimps. People who come to the Lord and, and, and are crying, God, 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 just, just help me today. Dominion takers know what they have been allocated. Remember? Yes. And they use and maximize what they have been given. They've been given authority, which is the right to command. And that command has to be obeyed. So I take charge of my territory. See, my mind is also part of my territory. So I shut down negative thoughts. If I don't, those thoughts are going to control me. See, it's amazing that you can see a believer who talks in tongues. All right? He can talk in tongues. He can fall under the anointing. But the enemy is controlling his mind. Are you listening to me? You know, when I was a younger believer, back home in Africa, if I preached anywhere and nobody fell under the anointing, I, I, I didn't feel like I preached. I needed to demonstrate power. I needed, I needed my ego boosted up a little bit. <laughs> so I needed to release the power of God. Everybody will fall under the anointing and I will feel big. But I began to think, I began to wonder, why would somebody fall under the anointing, get up and still be the same person? Tell me about that. Because one of the major areas where we really experience significant change in our lives is in our minds. Mm. If your mind doesn't change, I don't care how many pastors lay hands on you, pray for you. I don't care if angels visit you and you experience the highest power in the universe. If your mind isn't transformed, your life is going to remain that way. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. So watch this, watch this. If you are a believer, for example, and in your mind, you have accepted that you are unfortunate, that you are unlucky, you have accepted that God doesn't love you, you have accepted that, that good things just don't follow you, you have accepted that in your mind, you have accepted that you are a victim, okay? Listen, you can be in this service today and the power of God can be moving and everybody might sleep under the anointing for three days and wake up after three days. If you wake up and you still think the way you used to think, I'm unfortunate. Are you listening to me? Do you know that the fact that you slept under the anointing wouldn't make any difference in your life? You wouldn't even think it was anything. Because you haven't changed that belief in your mind that God doesn't love you. Oh. So whatever he does does not make any difference. Until you change what you believe. Yes. Oh my goodness, who am I? Who am I talking Ooh, to today? Who am I talking to today? Me. Who am I talking to today? That's me. Are you there? Yes, sir. You're a dominion taker. Establish dominion over your mind. Establish dominion over your feelings. Your feelings shouldn't control you. Yes. Establish dominion over your desires, your appetites. Mm -hmm. yes. Establish dominion over your, uh, your motives. Your motives. You should be a person who constantly examines your motives. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Examine your motives. I want to do something, but what's my motive? Am I doing it? Am I doing it for am I doing it uh, for the glory of God or am I doing it because I want to shine? If I'm doing it because I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a shine, then God doesn't get any glory from it. Are you there? Yes, sir. Come on now, come on now. Is anybody following what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Praise God. Paul said, I beat my body, I put it on the 
so that having preached the gospel, I myself would not be a castaway. You gotta establish dominion over yourself. You gotta establish dominion over the territory God has given you, your home, your business, your life, your destiny, your future. That's part of it. Thy kingdom come. Then notice it says there, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not just your will be done on earth, but it says as it is in, in what? In heaven. <clears throat> Praise God. So, now let's go back to what we're talking about. The dominion taker understands that prayer is, 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 is the way he functions. It's a system by which he functions. And he understands, he knows that the first thing is this, he's got to understand, he's got to have a proper concept, a proper concept of prayer. He understands that prayer is not just about meeting his needs. Prayer is about cooperating with God to bring down his kingdom, which is the rule, the reign, the influence, and the culture of God in the earth. The second thing, the second part of the process is the dominion taker has to see. He has to see. Amen. Now put up that scripture again. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now notice this. When Elijah came to Ahab and said to him, there will be no rain or dew until I say so. Do you think he just got that idea out of the blues and he just went up to the king to go tell, tell the king that? If he wasn't sure he had heaven's backing. You know, Middle Eastern kings in those days, you remember Esther? When Mordecai said to her, um, this is what Haman is planning. Go see the king and, 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 and plead with him and deliver the Jews. Esther said, I have not been summoned to the presence of the king for some time now. And you know the law of, of Persia. If I go to the king without an invitation, I'm going to be killed. Persian kings those days used to have bodyguards that had, that had this sharp axe. If you showed up before the king without being invited, they cut off your head. Are you there? Now imagine a king and his wife would not even see him for days. <laughs> Can you imagine? Our, our own culture today, we, 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 we may find it difficult to fathom that. But that's the Middle Eastern culture. A king sleeps alone. He, he has to, anybody he sleeps with, he's got to invite that person, including his wife. Except he invites her into his presence. She doesn't see him every time. She doesn't have that luxury of, of being around him every time. Are you listening to me? So Elijah must have spent time with God to see something beyond the physical. He saw what was in the mind of God for Israel. And what he saw when he came before the king, he proclaimed it. Amen. This is how prayer works for the dominion taker. We see into the spiritual. See, the spiritual controls the physical. Yes. The spiritual realm is the mother of the physical. Hey. I pity you if you're a believer and you can't perceive anything in the spirit realm. Jesus, Jesus. Are you listening to me? That means you might even be in danger right now and you don't even know because you can't perceive anything. Jacob said, this is the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. And I did not even know it. Spiritual blindness, spiritual insensitivity is one of the biggest problems in the church today. Believers who just do anything anyhow, live anyhow, and they can't know that something may be going on in this. How do you know when a breakthrough is coming your way? How do you know when God has opened a new season for you? How do you know when time shifts on your behalf? How do you know when an angel is assigned to visit you and deliver a blessing to you? How do you know when something good is about to happen and how you are to cooperate with God to make that thing happen? How do you know? How do you know? If you are not sensitive to the spiritual realm, if you can't see, if you can't perceive, if you can't comprehend things in the spirit. This is why it looks today like, like uh, uh, occultists 
and, and wizards and all that are so powerful. You know what gives them power? Let me tell you what gives, let me tell you what gives the devil power over you. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. What, what, what gives the devil power over you is what he knows about you that you don't know. Jesus Christ. That's, that's, that's the only thing that gives the devil power over you. Spiritually, you've been given authority over him. Yes, right. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. But the advantage he has, and sometimes that advantage can be momentary, it has to do with something about you he knows that you don't know. He might know that a blessing is coming to you. You don't even know. And because you don't know a blessing is coming to you, you don't know, you don't, you don't know what you are supposed to do in order to get the blessing. He knows. So, he goes ahead of you to shut down the blessing, hinder the blessing, delay the blessing or limit it. And here you are, you don't even know. One of the ways the enemy operates is that he can get into families. And the reason he likes getting into families is so that he cannot just oppress the people who are there, but so he can oppress generations to come. So before a child is born, the enemy can go right there into that family and, and set up problems waiting for that child. Jesus. Are you listening to me? Yes, <laughs> That's why you talk about generational curses. The enemy plans troubles, afflictions in a family, waiting for children to grow up and meet those problems. So here is a child who is supposed to be influential in life, who is supposed to be a, a mighty man of God in life. All right? His parents don't even know. Because if his parents knew, they would stand in prayer and keep the enemy from messing with that child's destiny or future. But because they don't know, the door is open to the enemy. He sees that that child is coming. He says the best way I can limit him or hinder him is to plant problems in his family line. So he plants high blood pressure. He plants depression. Are you listening to me? Into the bloodline. That child is born. He ought to be a, a strong man. But at the age of seven or eight, he starts struggling with suicidal thoughts. Are you listening to me? And he does not understand. What, what is going on? He starts struggling with anxiety, with fear. What is going on? He doesn't understand. Because nobody in that family could see what God's plan was, what was coming. They allowed the enemy to take advantage of it and put stumbling blocks in the way of that child. This is why some of us have problems. You see, it's easy to deal with a problem. Mm -hmm. It's easy to deal with a problem that is at your level. Sometimes it can be more difficult to deal with a problem that predated you. And that's why a lot of people are struggling today. Come on, are you still here? Yes, sir. That's why you gotta also take dominion over your family history. Some of us, when we pray, we gotta look at our family history and we gotta be able to say, this and this stops. Jesus. It can't continue in my family. Amen. Some of us have got to look at our family histories and say, I refuse to be a victim. This is why it's important. Watch this. Watch this. You see, when I see some of us, when I see some of us immigrants who came in here, our children are born here, our children came in here at an early age. It's important for us to help them understand their heritage. Because if you don't know where you're coming from, you don't really know who you are. And if you don't know where you're coming from, you're not gonna know where you're going. Are you, are you still here? Are you still here? Glory to God. You ought to be able to understand your roots. Amen. That's why young people, if you're listening to me, and those of you who are here, who, you know, your parents came in here, or you were born here, and all of that, don't start feeling like, well, I was born in America, I don't need my family. You know, I'm an American now, I don't care about my family. No, you do. Because you may claim you don't care now, but you may get to a point in your life where you begin to ask questions. Why are these things happening to me? Even doctors will ask you, do you have a history of this and this in your family? 
And if you don't know your family, what, what are you going to answer? <laughs> are you listening to me? If cancer is in your family, for example, it's good for your doctor to know. Because they're going to begin to kind of, uh, you know, watch out for certain things. Are you listening to me? And it can help you if certain things are detected on time. But if you don't know where you're coming from, that's why I'm telling you the devil is called the prince of darkness. Which means what? His major advantage is what he knows that you don't know. Oh my God, my time is up. Maybe next week I gotta continue with part two of this. See, that's why it's important for you to see. So you see, through prayer, a dominion taker sees in the spirit and then speaks and implements what he sees. That's real prayer. Prayer is not just, Father, touch me. Father, touch me. Father, touch me. Prayer is beyond that. You gotta see. Oh my goodness. Say, Father, help me to see. Father, help me to see. Glory to God. You see, Elijah's prayer, we started with James chapter 5. It says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Remember I started by telling you Elijah was a, is a dominion taker. And the reason his prayer availed much is because one, he understood that prayer is beyond father meet my needs. Prayer is about taking dominion. Number two, he also saw in the spirit what was about to happen. Amen. He saw what was in the mind of God before he came to the king to declare it. I, I promise you, your life will take a turn for the better when you begin to see. You see. Oh, my rabbi, who am I talking to here? Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Do you know how many tragedies we will, we will avoid? Early deaths that we can escape if we know how to see. If we can see into the, the spirit realm. Maybe there are jobs looking for you, but you can't see. And because you can't see, you don't really know what you are supposed to do to get those jobs. Somebody may be here who needs money. But because you can't see, you don't know where to go, what to do. Are you listening to me? And you see, people in the occult world are taking advantage of that. See, there are some level of information that is open and common in the spirit realm. Oh my God, I got a lot to tell you, but not today. Praise God. Some people wonder and say, why is it that uh, 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 some of these uh, uh, people in the demonic world know certain things? Because some level of information is general. Hmm. But then there's some information about you they can't access. Because it is secret. Remember the Bible says, the secret of God. Uh -huh. They can't access those things. Hmm. But there are some things about you that are general. Okay? And so that's why some of them, watch this. Before they, before they do something, they want to go to a palm reader. Are you listening to me? They want to go to a psychic to get information. Because they know that if they have information, it gives them what? Advantage. But here you are, you're a believer. <laughs> you have access to the one who holds all the information in the world. And you don't even care. Isn't that one of the reasons why we struggle? If I can get in God's presence and he shows me, hallelujah, somebody God is going to show you. Amen. Oh my goodness, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. He's going to show, you just got a job. God wants to show you how to, how to, how to excel on that job. Yes. He wants to show you. Yes, you have a child in the family that's giving you trouble. God wants to show you how to parent that child. He said, if you lack wisdom, ask. You're struggling with depression. God wants to show you how to overcome it. You may not be, only, you may not be able to overcome it only through the medication that you receive. And you know, sometimes, let me tell you this. Maybe I'm going to close right here. Come on now. Praise God. You know, sometimes we need to understand this. There are situations in your life that will not go through the prayer of someone else. 
My God, I wish, I wish you would understand what I'm saying. Let me say that again. There are certain things in your life that are not going to go through the prayer of someone else. Those things will only go when you discover certain secrets by yourself and you utilize them. Yes. Are you following me? Yes. So you might have a situation that you've been visiting doctors. Everybody has prayed for you and it's still there. Maybe it's because there's something God wants to tell you, show you. Are you listening to me? And that might be the solution to the problem. So if you keep going everywhere, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get the solution until you come to God and you seek him and he shows you the answer. Amen. I close by telling you this. When I was at university back home in Nigeria, you know, in America here you call it college, right? Um, our final year project was like a group project. So we were like five of us assigned to that project. Naturally, I became the group leader. So here we were. We started writing that project. And then we came to, I believe it was uh, chapter two or three. Mm -hmm. I believe chapter three. Which was like, we had to research and then collect information. And then put it on data. You know, put the data in, uh, in, uh, in uh, you know, uh, we, we, we got to fashion out uh, systems by which we cannot um, and bring out the data. So we were looking for a formula that will kind of help us. We got stuck for one month and we were supposed to graduate and there's no way we will graduate except we completed that project. That was like one of the, uh, the final thing that we needed to, 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 to submit. We had written our exams and all that. Now we were on our project. So we got stuck. One month we were still there. We started going from one department to another. Uh, we went to statistics department asking them to help see if they could, they could give us a formula that can help us present our data and all of that. They gave us several formulae. We tried them. It didn't work. So we got stuck. So one day, my group members were in my room. And we were kind of thinking, okay, what do we do now? Since we've been stuck like this for one month, we're wasting time. Maybe we need to go take another topic and start all over again. Some of them said, what? <laughs> a new topic right now? Where's the time for us to go gather all the data? We, you know, you have to do research, you have to send questionnaires to different places, you have to, all kinds of things. It takes time. They said we're behind time already. No, no, no. So what do we do? And then it just occurred to me that I had not asked God to give me the answer. So I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, please, everybody leave my room now. I want to talk to God. Mm -hmm. What? They were like, I said, leave my room. I want to talk to God. So they left my room. And then I turned to the Lord and I said, Lord, you got to make a way for me. I, I'm stuck here. God, you know all things. Isn't that what your word says? Your word says the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. So God, give me, what is the secret? What is the formula that we can apply and it gets us out of this, 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 this problem right now? Then I heard a voice inside me speaking. I took a pen and I wrote a formula. Then I applied it and it worked. Hallelujah. I opened the door and shouted to my group members. I said, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. They came in, we all tried it, it worked. They were like, how? You knew this all the while? And you... I said, no, I just talked to God. And, and he gave me the answer. Amen. They said, what? You mean God, God, God speaks like that? <laughs> you mean God also knows statistics? He knows maths? What do you mean God knows? Where did all the knowledge come from? Praise God. And that got, got us out of that situation. And you know, it's amazing. When we eventually... Um, we eventually wrote that project, we completed it, and we submitted it. All of us, the five group members, we came together, and we went to our supervisor, and we submitted it. You know, when later I checked the result, I was, I was surprised. <laughs> the lecturer gave me an A, and gave everybody else in the group Bs. How that happened, I don't know. It's a group project. <laughs> Are you following me? I didn't go behind to tell her 
Well, I'm the one who did this, or I'm the one who did that. Nothing. But I got an A. Everybody else got a B. Amen. Praise God. Amen. See, there's something in God's presence waiting for you. That's right. There's something you got to take hold of in God's presence Ooh, that can change whatever you are going through right now. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. See, maybe you're listening to me right now. You're watching me. And there's something you got to rule over. There's something you got to overcome. There's something that you got to defeat in your life. There's an information waiting for you in God's presence. There's a strategy. There's an ability. There's an anointing that's waiting in God's presence. And if you will change your concept of prayer, rather than asking God to do things for you, if you will ask him to show you what to do, then God will deliver the secret that you need to solve the problem that you are facing right now. You know, for most of us, prayer is about asking God to do everything for us. But you need to understand, dominion takers see prayer differently. When they come to God, they're like, God, show me what to do. Show me what your will is. Not just for me, but for this church, my family, my city. And then I cooperate with God to enforce and effect his will. Yes. This is the message from the Revival Life Church. Come on, somebody. Stand to your feet. Stand right now. Lift your two hands and let's just begin to worship the Lord. Let's begin to worship the Lord. Let's begin to honor the Lord. Let's begin to glorify him. Let's bless him. Let's, 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 let's receive his word in our hearts and say, Father, we have received your word. Now, God, we're, we're, we're going out and we're going to put the word to work in our lives. We're going to function as dominion takers and, and, and nothing shall be impossible for us. Nothing, nothing shall be impossible for us. We're going to function the way that you, you created us to. We're going to function according to the calling that you have placed on our lives. We're going to function as dominion takers and nothing shall be impossible. Now I need you to pray. I need you to pray and seek the Lord. There are things that you may need. Maybe you're, there's a situation right now. And, 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 and I need you to talk to the Lord and say, God, show me. Show me what to do. Show me what to do. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. God, show me the secret that I need to deal with that problem I'm facing. Just show me that secret. I'm no longer asking you to just do it. Now I understand that as a dominion taker, I got to cooperate with you to make things happen in my life. So I want you to show me, show me. Download secrets to me. Give me ideas, strategies, concepts. If there are skills that I need that I don't have, God, you can download those skills to me. You can show me what to do. And I thank you because I'm going to walk in victory in every area of my life. I believe and I declare over somebody, something that troubled you last week, that thing is going to bow to you this week. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. That's the word God gave me for you. That's the word God gave me for you. Something that bothered you, something that troubled you last week, last month, it's going to become your slave this week. You know why? Because you're going to turn to the Lord and you're going to get a strategy. Amen. The Lord is going to show you how Amen. to handle it. Amen. You've been expecting God to show up by himself and take care of it. God is saying, I got a strategy. I got an idea. I'm waiting for you to just ask. I'm waiting for you to ask and I will give it to you. Yes, my Father. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God says for me to tell someone, this is the, this is the week. A new song is going to flow out of you. You know, you know, listen to me. There are, there are things you struggle with, and, and 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 all of a sudden, when you get that breakthrough, are you listening to me? You start dancing when nobody's playing music around you. Are you there? Because 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 there's this new joy that just takes over from the inside. Oh hallelujah. Oh hallelujah. Somebody, just a text message is going to cause you to, to scream. Amen. And people around you are going to turn around and say, is something wrong? Is something wrong? Is something wrong? Amen. <laughs> but it's a shout of joy. Amen. Are you listening to me? 
It's a shout of joy. It's a shout of joy. It's a shout of joy. I prophesy over you. The Lord said for me to tell somebody here, or somebody who is watching, God is turning the tables of the enemy. Listen, there's an area where he seems to have the advantage over you. The tables are turning. Oh my God. I said the tables are turning. All it takes is for God to show you something that the enemy about you that you that you do not know. Amen. The tables are turning. The tables are turning. Amen. What the enemy used against you. Amen. It's going to become a weapon in your hand that you will use not only to defeat the enemy but to rule over the enemy in that area of your life. Amen. You see, you need to understand, child of God, there's a difference between victory and dominion. Mm. See, victory means that I can defeat an enemy, mm. all right, and I go my way. That enemy can come up again tomorrow to fight me. Mm. Are you listening to me? Yeah. But dominion means, <laughs> dominion means that I discover my advantage. Yeah. I not only defeat my enemy, but I discover my advantage over my enemy. And I use that advantage, advantage to perpetually rule over my enemy. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Are you listening to me? Yes. This week, God is going to reveal to you a hidden advantage yes. that you have yes. over the enemy in your finances, in your health, in your marriage. Yes. Something you didn't know. The enemy knows you don't know that. That's why he's been attacking you. But God is about to show you your hidden advantage. So that when you use it, you will not only have victory, but you're going to rule over the enemy. Things are changing this week. Things are changing this week. In Jesus' powerful name. God bless you. All right, get seated. We're going to take our offering. Amen. And uh, there are one or two ways that you can give your offering. If you are watching um, and you want to give your offering via check, make that check out to Revival Life Church. Revival Life Church. And then take a picture of the check with your phone. Make sure the four edges of the check come into the picture. And then text that picture to 301 326 7367. If you want to give using Zelle, Revival Life Church Dallas at gmail.com. If you want to use, if you want to give using Cash App, it's Midnight Commanders, the, the Cash App sign and the Midnight Commanders, or 301-326-7367. You can also give online. Go to our website, RevivalLifeChurchDallas.com. Look for the donate button, and you can use that. All right? So you can use any of those um, avenues to, to give. Glory to God. Amen. Okay. While you're getting your offering ready, let me make a few announcements. Then I'm going to invite um, Prophetess Doris to come pray for us. Bless the offering. Amen. And, and speak into your life. She's a prophetess, so I want her to come speak into your life for just a, a few minutes. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's take announcements quickly. Um, remember our national conference for Midnight Commanders, though. The Midnight Commanders National Conference is coming up on the 3rd and the 4th of December in Maryland. Okay, so we're asking everybody, those of you watching us right now from Maryland and all over that area, please make sure you are in the conference. We also want you to come from all over the country, 3rd and 4th of December. Don't miss our conference. You're going to be greatly blessed. And then our Thanksgiving service as a church will be on Sunday, the 28th of November. Our Thanksgiving service as a church, Sunday, the 28th of November. Praise God. And so we encourage all of you to be there that day because we want you to come up and testify about God's goodness in your family. It's going to really be a day of, of testimonies. So mark your calendar for that day. And it's also going to be a day of uh, feasting for us. Amen. So tell everybody about it. Come with your family. Come with your friends. Now remember the five-minute prayer in Calder on KGGR, 1040 a.m., 755 a.m., Monday to Friday. Five minutes, I show up. 
I share the word, share a nugget with you, and I prophesy over you Monday to Friday. Praise God. Now we encourage you to kind of, uh, uh, we, we also send out the recording, uh, you know, via text. When you get it, the objective is not that you just listen to it. The objective is that you pass it on. Share it to as many people as you can. Praise God. I am getting reports from people in different places in Nigeria, in the UK, uh, in Togo, uh, in Canada, and places like that, saying they got those messages and God is using it to bless them. Amen. Praise God. So also remember our television program on the Now Network, 11 a.m. Central Time tomorrow. You can search it. Uh, if you have a dish, you can search it. You can search for the Now Network. It can also be watched around the world on satellite dishes. Um, you can also watch it online by simply going to the thenownetwork.org. Thenownetwork.org. And then remember, Thursday is Bible study. For now, because of the pandemic, we're having Bible study on our conference call. So uh, we're having only one service a week right here. And um, we're trusting God that pretty much December or maybe January, um, things will just, uh, you know, and all of that. We're praying for those of you who are at home and you haven't been to church for one year now. Oh, praise God. Uh, we're trusting God that you're going to start coming back to church. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So join us for Bible study on Thursday at 8 p.m. And the number is there on the screen that you can call. Very important that you be part of Bible study. Very important. And then remember, um, this ministry, uh, our parent ministry is Midnight Commander's Prayer Network. So we pray Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 11 p.m. Central Time. And people join us from everywhere. Join us to pray. And uh, God will take your life to a different level. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let me invite Prophet Doris. Um, pick a mic. G give her a mic from there. You gotta get your own mic. Yeah, we all need to stay safe. <laughs> Praise God. So um, she's gonna pray over the offering, and then she's gonna just speak into our lives. Amen. So let's put our hands together and let's welcome her, <laughs> Prophet Doris. You know her. She's always been here, and we thank God for her coming all the way. Uh, Holy Ghost Prayer Ministries, she is a blessing, a blessing, a blessing, and we thank God for her. May the Lord bless you and honor you, and thank you for coming. And thank you for, she's such an incredible giver. She is such an incredible giver. And you've been here so many times. We owe you a visit. My wife was asking me yesterday, uh, we should put a date down when we're coming to, when we're going to come see you. So... Um, uh, before the year runs out, we're going to surprise you. We're going to just Ooh, gonna show up. Hallelujah. We're going to show up. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So go ahead. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Daddy, I give God glory for what God is using you and the entire family to do. In the name of Jesus. It's not easy for somebody else to invite you to come to your altar. It's not easy. But thank you for trusting me and the Lord that called me. In the name of Jesus. Without taking your time, we take the offering. Yes. Can somebody read us? Is there any song for it? Just pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can you lift up your offering? I want you to begin to speak to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity, oh God, to be partaker of this, giving back to God from what you gave to us. Father, let our seed, oh God, open doors that no man can shut. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you will bless every one of us and use us to bless others. In the name of Jesus. I never ask you for a blessing that I will never use to bless others. Father, whatever you give to us, oh God, 
let us understand that it's pleasing, it's good to give you back because everything belongs to you. And there is nothing that we can give you that will be enough to say thank you for all you have been doing for us. In the name of Jesus. Father, put in our heart to understand that we are sowing in the good land, that our seed will grow and bring forth hundredfolds in the name of Jesus. Father, bless your children. Let our seed bring life. Let it bring peace in the name of Jesus. Healing and make ways in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now you can drop your off. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I was in the house. I was asking God. I said, I'm going to pray for this church. I want to agree with them in prayer. And it took me to John 11. And it was about Lazarus. Lazarus is a man that have no hope of anything. He, can, he found himself in a situation. He can't help himself. The family cannot help him. How do you find it? You see your beloved one dying. You can't do nothing to help. And he said a lot of us have been in that situation. I don't know the power that want to intimidate you. The young man was intimidated. I don't know the enemy that want to intimidate you. Is that sickness, affliction? Is that faulty foundation, barrenness, miscarriages, shame or disgrace? I say today, Whatever power that wants to intimidate you, there is no more control over you in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus Christ will show up just as he showed up in, to the family of Lazarus. A hopeless man finds himself back alive. Wherever your helper is, may they begin to locate you now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will never be intimidated by time. Because they said for four days they have been buried. Just short sickness. And the Lord said that sickness is not unto them. I said unto you, child of God, that thing that you are going through today is not unto them. There is help coming to you. Amen. Jesus Christ is locating your children. Amen. Jesus Christ is locating that family. Amen. Jesus Christ is visiting that foundation. Amen. Jesus Christ is fighting your battle. Amen. He knows it all. Amen. It will show up on your behalf. Amen. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Amen. He said, I am the resurrection. I don't know what has that in your life. I don't know how long they have written you off. <clears throat> Jesus Christ said it is the resurrection. I prophesize unto your life that whatsoever have died in your life is coming back in the name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That is the same power that resurrected Jesus. That power that resurrected Lazarus. That, that power will resurrect your marriage. Amen. It will resurrect your womb. Amen. It will resurrect your relationship. Amen. It will resurrect your business. Amen. Your ministry. Whatever it is. Including your finances. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Amen. You will never be put to shame any longer. Amen. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Amen. God we mock your mockers Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. He will make a way for you in the wilderness. Amen. Anywhere you are today, Amen. you must flourish Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus Christ said, show me where Lazarus was laid. I said from today, your story will be come and see. Amen. Your story Come and see. Amen. Because Jesus is asking today, show me that problem. 
them. Show me that affliction. Show me that battle. Show me that body that you have been carrying for years. Amen. Yes. Your testimony will become a seed. Amen. Your testimony will become a seed. Amen. Jesus will come and see that problem. Amen. Jesus is coming with miracles. Amen. Jesus is coming with solution. Amen. Jesus is coming with healing. Amen. Jesus is coming with blessing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Say, come and see. Thank you, Jesus. Your enemy will come and see. Amen. They will come and sing with you. Amen. Those that laugh at you, they will come and laugh Amen. with you. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. It's not yet over. Amen. Until when the Lord said it's over, yes, the beginning is always sad. Yes. But you are going to end well. Amen. Before this year, we come to an end. Amen. You will testify. Amen. The goodness of God in the land of the living. Amen. I say somebody will testify. Amen. Somebody will be testified. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You will testify Amen. his goodness Amen. in the land of the living. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I hear somebody saying, God. Come and see. Hallelujah. Before this year we come to an end, I say somebody will be saying, Come and see. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. He said, He commanded to roll away the stone. Mm -hmm. God is commanding. Thank you, Jesus. It, whether they like it or not, Thank you, Jesus. that helper, whether they are on the north, is south and west. Amen. Anybody that is in the position to help you, Amen. God is commanding them Amen. to go and do it Amen. by fire, by fire. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. He's telling that enemy, you must let her go. Amen. You must let him go. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. every stone that be covering your glory, that nobody can see anything good from you. I said as from today, Amen. that son it has been rolled away. Amen. I see the hand of God running it away. Amen. The angel of the Lord is running it away. Amen. Every sickness must roll away. Amen. That barrenness must go away. Amen. Every problem in your life, uh, that battle oh, must be over Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus Christ comforts Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, even the grave. Obey the command. Mm. There is no power greater than his power. Yes. God is commanding your finances. Amen. God is commanding your children. Amen. God is commanding your situation. Amen. Whatever that you have that is on the grave, God is commanding Amen. for it to come up alive. Amen. Your marriage is coming up again. Amen. Your marriage will come up alive. Amen. Your relationship will come up alive. Amen. Your Jesus. Amen. Everything dead in your life must come up alive. Amen. Because God has said it. Amen. And we believe it. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 May God bless you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. Over to you. Thank you, Prophetess. We appreciate you. And your coming is always a blessing. Amen. All right, everybody, stand. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you. This is Revival Life Church, and um, um, we want to thank you for being part of our service. We want to thank all of you at home who are watching online. Thank you. We appreciate you all. Be sure to be here again next Sunday or join us online next Sunday. Praise God. Amen. And I think we have uh, some new people who came, uh, guests of our prophet stories. We're going to meet you after the service. Thank you for coming. Amen. 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 Open your two hands. Let me pray for you. She has prayed. I just want to declare one word. I believe and I declare that the presence of God in this place goes with you. Every word that Prophet Stories has spoken over your life, Amen. you will see the manifestation of it in your life Amen. throughout this week, Amen. throughout this month, Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Say Amen. Amen. Now look up the screen. Let's pray our final, our final prayer. Let's go. Father, thank you for renewing us in your presence and empowering us with your word. Now send us out as super conquerors to reign in life and live out the revival life. Use us to demonstrate your love and power. And lost in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and thank you for coming. You're dismissed.